Hi there. I've got my iPad with me today so I can see whether people are you know, trying to communicate with me. The best thing to do, I think, is to um, comment underneath wherever you're watching this. Um, so if you can, if, if you're getting the audio, because uh, I don't get it here, um, can you let me know that you, or somebody let me know that they're, yeah, that you can hear what I'm saying. And uh, I'll get started as it's seven o'clock. <coughs> Those of you that are watching, I haven't got any numbers and, uh, at all to see how many people are viewing at the moment, but um, thanks if you are. So far it's one. I suspect that's my mum. <laughs> right, okay, so what you're looking at at the moment is obviously the piece that I sort of advertised this dam uh, demonstration with. Um, it's all pretty much in the same vein as a demonstration I did here last week and I'm trying to do on a regular basis now at um, 7 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time uh, on Sundays. Uh, it won't always be gel plates, but I've got a few other things I think lined up. It's a development on Yates, or Yeats, I'm not sure how he pronounces it, and I'm really interested in getting hold of him if anybody, uh, if anybody's in contact with him. Um, yeah, it's a development of his oil pastel resist technique. All of the images that you'll be looking at today all, are all generated from that line drawing there which I'm hoping you can see if I can you see it I think you can see that yeah so that sits behind all of them I'll get that out of the way it sits behind those ones this one is I did this quite early on on the right hand side here and it was done using a oil pastels the Sennelia oil pastels and then just doing a couple of uh, stamp prints with the medium sized gel plate that I'll be using in a minute. And then reworking a bit over the top, I think, maybe not, I might be wrong about that, I don't think I did actually, I can see a lot of scrape, and basically what I do is I scrape away the excess um, oil pastel, and it's become like a painting technique for me really, where I can it's just a really interesting way of just blocking in whole quadrants of colour. So that was an early one using the R pastels. This one's a later one that I did with uh, somebody who gets some tuition off me from uh, time, to, uh, time to time. And that's using, as a base layer, wax crayons because I found I could get more detail in with the wax crayons, which is basically what this one is. Roughly, you know, it's not going to be identical, but similarish colours, and uh, obviously using the resist from the wax crayon, and doing the same thing as you would do as Yates did in the with the oil pastel where you scrape. I found having like a steel or a glass surface make sure it's reinforced glass before you do this on it, um, is probably better for scraping away residual oil pastel after you've applied the acrylic paint layer um, because you need to give it a bit of welly and you need something like, uh, like that or the edge of a, of a palette knife. And don't go for something quite wide, you want something where you can work within, I use that part of uh, what is a combing or graining tool, uh, because you'll need to, you need to, yeah, you need to be quite heavy handed, bear that in mind with the paper as well, these are all on Canson 200, uh, well it's 120 pound or 200 GSA, so it's quite heavy paper, it's ostensibly card. Uh, right, so that's enough for that one. Might come back to it later, as it was the one that I uh, sort of used to as the showpiece, the flagship, I suppose, for the um, for this demonstration stuff. So I'll pop that to one side. Right, what I've also got that is a development that I've literally only come up with in the last hour and a half, um, and I don't know how it'll work. 
and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to, but we'll, I'm going to play it by ear because first of all I need to take a print off of this one, see what I'm left with it as a residual print on the plate itself. I may then put a sealant layer like a, it will probably be buff titanium onto or on, on the background of whatever I get as the residual print off of that that remains on the print plate. This is drawn out using these. These are Caran Dash water soluble crayons. So when you put moisture on them, though I'm, I'm pretty sure they're gonna do something quite erratic, but it will be limited moisture. And I'm very interested, to, like it is, you're seeing it for the first time, this is a dummy run for me. I thought we'd give you something a bit exclusive. It may not work. What uh, and, and a lot of it is, as I say, dependent on what comes off of it. I've done what I can, but you can't always tell. Uh, what I would like to do, as I say, is to do the stamp print, take that, let it dry off or dry it off with the hairdryer. I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with the noises from the hairdryer. It does speed the whole process up, so it's absolutely vital. So I'll be I'll have the residual print of what's left that doesn't take from the resist onto there. So what isn't paper as an open surface will highly likely stay as paint on on this. I'll then roll her out a thin layer of um like I say buff titanium and then correspond hopefully the portrait where it's taken from there onto there lift it away and then I we can sit and watch it together because it'll be new for me and it'll be it'll definitely be new for you as well because I don't know what it's going to do but those they will react and the, I mean I haven't I know that there's other watercolour pastels, well not, the, not really pastels, watercolour crowns out there, but the Caran Dash ones are very soluble. But, it is a limited amount of moisture that they're gonna be introduced to, and this will activate like the drying aspects of the acrylic paint quite quickly. So, it'll be interesting. It, I don't know whether it'll be worthy scraping away at it afterwards. I'm totally winging it with that one. I hope you, um, I hope you appreciate it when it's light, and I hope it sort of pays dividends. Right, so I'll get this one out of the way because there's quite a lot to do, and I don't want it to, you know. I, hopefully, I can get this all done within an hour, an hour and a half. But I'm going to check my iPad now and see if anybody's saying anything. Not yet, okay. Right, okay. So this is obviously for American friends over there. I'm gonna move the light because I think you'll see what I do on the gel plate a little better. So apologies if that affects, but it just shine off if I put it like that. I think what you will get once I put the paint on there is just a very reflective surface. Um, yeah, so for my American friends, it's five by, I think it's seven by, seven by 10. <laughs> so we invented the input. Yeah, so it's ten by eight, and in centimeters it's twenty-six by twenty. So the medium-sized one, and I'll probably be using that one. I certainly did with the the one that I used to advertise the um the demonstration with. All of the paints I'll be using are over. Winter and Newton Gallery up there, middle of the range, um, medium gauge acrylic paints. They're not, you know, a lot, I think a lot of you are used to using sort of golden liquid um, acrylics, which are absolutely brilliant, faultless. But these are, I don't know, I think this is a bit cheaper to be honest with you, and it's just as effective. So, yeah. Budget is always an issue for an artist. <laughs> so what I'm using for this one is uh, a favourite of mine, Ultramarine, and that's a Galleria one. The only other one that I, uh, uh, acrylic paint that I'll use in all likelihood on this will be the System Free, which is it's another middle range, uh, medium body acrylic paint. So yeah, 
at this it's it's best to get a fine liner onto that and that's that is very fine so this is quite simple this bit just drop it where it needs to be uh, there we go a fair bit of pressure on it but don't go too wild because you'll lose the residual image So you can be quite quick about it. So there we go. Right now, I don't know how much of that you can actually see. I don't know how best to um. Let me find a piece of white paper. Bear with us a moment. This is impromptu. How much of that can you see now? Does that make any more sense? I'm looking across my room at, at, at a video of what you're getting, so I think that makes more sense. Obviously, yeah, I mean, there's enough there for me to go with. I'm probably going to put some warmer, warmer uh, colours into that before I do the thing that I said with the buff titanium. But that's, that's sort of... It's given me the confines of the structure of the portrait, which... It's all I really need in order to do that experiment with the um, the watercolour grains. This one I'm going to leave to dry for a minute and then I'm going to scrape it off and look and assess whether I need to use to go straight in with the oil pastels or to put in another layer of wax crayons and then do another print over the top. I'll probably, I don't, you never know until you've scraped it off and it's yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm going to give it a, a bit of drying time rather than waste the electric and uh, your ears on the hair dryer. I can leave that to one side and work on this one for a couple of minutes and then see how that drops in on this uh, experiment with the watercolour crowns. Okay. I'm not going to ruin a sheet of paper for doing that, so you'll have to bear with me on this bit. Right. Decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to go with this is cadmium red. So this is system three, which is it's a little bit denser than Galleria, and I'm not sure how how widely available Windsor and Newton and Galleria are. But I mean, wherever you are, you'll be able to get a hold of medium body. It's just your standard acrylic. Apologies, I'm going to have to switch the hairdryer on, plug your ears. Don't want to get the colours all mixed up on it. Something I have to bear in mind with this specific plate is that it's got a blue tint to it. Uh, let's have a look. Can you see? How does that look to you? 
You see what's happening now with it? I'm looking across 20 feet of room. So <laughs> I think you can make it out. Right, I'm going to try it off again. And uh, we'll do the experiment first. And then it gives it a bit of a, ch a chance to dry. I am debating whether I should... Should I do this instead of buff titanium? I've just had. I'm going to go for pale violet, which is a sort of lavender colour, because I think it will contradict. And there's a lot of yellow in that, and I think it, I want some sort of complementary colour set up on it. Right. So this is like a binder that will activate the layers beneath it. So I was. That is ostensibly the blue that I took the resist from. The red that I sort of, a lot of that I used to just, hopefully that's just going to be like a contradiction colour against the blue that's giving the structure from that. The yellow to give it a bit of body and then this hopefully will have an effect on the colours that are on the one that I've used the watercolour crowns for. But we shall see. So... So when it's a, when it's like a binder layer, I tend to put a little bit more on. See the mistake I've made already. I didn't dry that properly, did I? Come on. It does. Right, I need to be quick here. Give myself some space. This is going to sort of disregard, I think that this will, I don't know, I don't know how this is going to bind, I don't know how long to give it, <laughs> I'm sorry I just came up with it, literally, it occurred to me to do something like this about, I don't know, a couple of hours ago, and uh, as I had the spare time, I thought right, I'll map one out, Ooh, wow, bonkers. I like that word. That is interesting. I knew it would do something interesting. Right, it might need scraping away. That's going to evolve as it dries because that's in the process of drying right now. But I don't know whether you can see. There's a great expressionist painting on on just that bit. Let's do the thing with the paper again. See that? I'm just going to do this. How's that? Can you see that? Okay, right. I think I can work with that later. There's loads of structure in there. That has done things I did not expect. So there you go. There's something for you to explore, they're, and they're not that expensive, these Karen Dash uh, watercolour crayons. If you just search, I don't know, wherever you get your, yeah, they're, they're at most, I got mine, I think, off of Amazon, to be honest, but been about for years. Right, I'm going to put that to one side and scrape off this one. Keep your eye on that one. That's going to change. I'm going to have a swig of water. I'll see if I've had any other questions come through, so bear with us a moment. Okay. Okay, so once again, that's a, a graining tool. You're actually supposed to use that end to give, it's for using on paint and varnishes to give a, a sort of a veneer of a wood finish. I don't really, I mean, I find them great for just painting with. I use them as paint brushes or print making, they're fantastic. You, all sorts of different sizes. These are, uh, 
and there's one that sort of fits in the middle between those two sizes as well. But for this today, I'm going to use them to scrape away the paint that is sat on top of the um, the wax crown. So obviously it's not soaked into the page. And you'll be able to see, there we go, straight away. Now like I said, I am doing this onto a, a, um, a cutting mat. It's okay, it works, but if, you, if you're gonna, I'm, I'm doing that so you don't get any, underneath this is my light box. It's a, and don't go getting funny ideas, I do all of my work freehand. I just use a light box for replicating what I've done freehand. <laughs> Very defensive about that. Um, but for these purposes, you just get nothing but a, a, a reflecting light off, off of the, the, what I use to, to light up what you're looking at right now. So I put the cutting mat down so you can actually see what it is that I'm working on. So you'll see I sneakily put in quite a bit of um, white um, wax crayon, which is, it's pretty effective actually. It's definitely helpful with the um, With the with the portraits, and I do. For, I mean, the, the 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 oil pastels are fantastic, especially if you use something like I'm. Um, you know, I'm quite lucky because I've, I've been using oil pastels for donkey's years. I've got quite a few Sennelier ones, and that they're bulletproof in this technique. That I think that. There's so much oil content in them that well, you can smell the linseed oil in them, and uh, they're really effective. But they're not—you can't get the fine detail that you can do. And this broken line, you've got a lot less chance of getting that tactile broken line with the with the oil pastels, especially the Sennelier ones. They tend to smear into, which is great. They'll, they'll smear into the paper rather than completely because there's very little surface material in comparatively speaking uh, to the to the oil pastels with the wax crayons if the two are in context you get less smearing of the colors they do blend a little bit when you do this over the top of them and I do try to bear that in mind when I'm when I'm laying them down Uh, there you go. So that's. I think I can go straight in with the with the oil pastel. What I'm thinking of doing. Oh, see, I could generate three images here quite easily because I really like where this has gone. And I know if I use that over the top of either of those two it's going to go and I might be misreading it it's just it's yeah I think I'm pretty sure there's something worth preserving in that image I mean I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure it's not coming across very clearly on the uh, on the camera um, so what I am thinking of doing with this hmm see I've got a bigger plate that I could use roll out a different colour, drop that onto it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think, it's been too long hesitating on things like that. Okay, right, I'm going to do the oil pastel because I'm pretty sure that's clear to go with the oil pastel. And speaking of clear, that's the advantage with the Sennelli oil pastels. Um, that I know that looks like a white oil pastel, it's not, it's transparent. That has massive advantages with if you want to retain the information underneath, like 
I want to retain a lot of that highlight and around there and on the eyelids probably I mean that's not going to work as a highlight but on the nose I want to retain some of the highlights again bottom the eyelids and probably on the mouth um, there and the sides of that right and then the rest of it use like a more standard oil pastel image So that's a Naples yellow, it's an LEA oil pastel. tell when I'm concentrating I go quiet don't I <laughs> okay right. I'm Sometimes you just can't tell whether the uh, the wrappers come off of the oil pastel or not. <laughs> that was the case just then. <laughs> the f one of the vital things to remember about this technique is that it's It's all going to be one colour on the plate, but then it so it's all one mark. It, it becomes one. I mean, I, I'm sure that's quite obvious to people who work a lot in printing. But I'm, I come from more of a sort of painting background, so it's something I'm constantly having to remind myself when I'm working in this way. So what I'm just going to. Okay, so crunch time, what do I do? Do I... Still making my mind up. I think I'm going to try this all again with different um, approaches. So, 
I think what I'm going to do in order to keep to maintain this in somehow to the keeping of the one that I originally um, don't like that. Uh, showed you with the with the like the advertised product. I think what I'm going to do is actually try to get as close to it as possible and use that across there which is what I did with the one that I advertised of then might depends how it comes out on the residual print again but I might plonk that down on top of that uh, I'm of the opinion that maybe that needs scraping back so bear with me a minute while I do that I'm going to check the comments as well See <laughs> so again, I am gonna reiterate. If you can do this on a strong resistance surface, steel, glass, like I say, this is reinforced glass underneath this that hard edge against this when you're when you're removing the residual resist media I can feel I mean like I say this is the first time that I've used it this way but I I can just feel how this is responding if I was doing this on the glass I'd be getting a lot more purchase on on the resist media which in this case is obviously the watercolour you also, I'm not doing it very much at the moment, it helps to go back in and... But again, this is another reason why I use such heavy gauge paper. I don't know whether you can tell from the noise that I'm making with this, but I'm quite heavy handed. At the best of times, that's going to make some people who know me quite well laugh. Subtle is not my strong point. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, so switching back, keep that over there for a minute. I've left a bit of I'm not one for cleaning the plates and I'm, I've, I've heard Yates say the same he said I, on one of them I think it was specifically the one where he's doing the uh, the oil plate uh, pastel resist he uh, I seem to recall him saying that he used to when he first got his gel plates he used to clean them all the time and I think I've actually properly ever cleaned any of my gel plates in there. I don't know it's nearly it's two years I've been using them now anyway so yeah that's a really small amount again and then trying to pick this out in the middle and touch down right again you have to sort of bear in mind that I want to retain some of the residual image on the, on the plate <laughs> that trust me is going to be interesting because there's a lot of subtlety in the oranges and uh, but it needs to dry and you'll see what I mean about the difference in the resist qualities of the of the wax crown versus the oil pastel And I'm sure you get it, it, it will be a comparable resistance even if you don't. And I mean, these are not cheap. They're the 
So the best part of nearly getting on for two quid at well, one pound thirty, one pound forty each. But if you use oil pastel a lot, like I do, there isn't a comparison. They're just in a completely different league. So I'm going to have to do the same thing again that I did um, with this one and find a and put in a binder layer so that will bind it onto the paint behind because that's virtually dry now so it needs a binder layer so in order to maintain some of this on here I'm going to take the risk and uh, go over a lot of it with um, the transparent oil pastel just so a lot of the information underneath retains its integrity so to speak but I, I, you can see, I can't see what it is that I'm doing to you. I mean, that's not a big deal for somebody like me, but I can see that being problematic for other artists. Right, okay. I think that will, I might add a little bit of, you know what, just to make sure that you understand where the outline is. I'm going to go around it like that. Do to use this blue as the binder colour on it. I do tend to think in opposites when it comes to colour. I don't know if this, I've heard people, especially on the opposing gender, say to me that like, there's a lot of um, emotion. I, I do not see emotion in colour. I've never stood in front of a painting and it made me cry or had much of an emotional. I've looked at plenty of images and had to deal with the fact that I'm quite jealous of how the artist has made it. <laughs> that seems to be a recurring notion. <laughs> I suppose that's emotive. Right. Okay. I'm going to go with... Because mm, all of those yellows are going to go green, invariably, if I use... A blue on there, unless I. Oh, I know what to do. It didn't work last time it came out as a. I mean, I think it's come out quite nicely, but it's a lot more dry now, and I'm using the oil pastel as the resist rather than the watercolour um, crayon. So I'm going to go again with the. the oh, that's a lot. Um, That's pale violet, what anyone else would call lavender. Bear with me some more, shouldn't be doing that while it's all difficult for myself that okay this is guesswork so this is where the light box comes in handy okay let's do it right, let's see what that does and at this point I think the image on the gel plate is probably going to be obliterated but we'll see, it was quite a happy surprise with that other one. I really want to work that into something else, but I'll probably make a mess of it because there's aspects of the image that I already really like. This is what I mean, you see. That's come out really nicely on that bit. Right, so I'll put that to one side to dry off. Off. 
How's that look to you? It's a bit better lit. You'll see the difference in the oil pastel, how cleanly you can extract the paint. Definitely advisable to clean the earth, whatever it is that you're using to remove, like the blade or whatever it is, is give that a clean. Um, I've definitely found that using a bit of blue paper on it works best because you really need to get the, the oil pastel, it tends to stick to the stir surfaces. You're either peeling it away from or the thing that you're using to peel it away from. Bits of that, but I'm going to go back in with the oil pastel over the top of it now. A bit just because I, uh, I think it needs it. Need to get picky about my colours there. Eh? I like to leave evidence of where the plug because it's going to happen anyway. So I like this bound, and I'm I'm quite into um, well, a number of projects that I'm working on. Sort of a number of the reasons that I got a gel plate in is to assist with the uh, frame breaking. That um, it just keeps turning up time and time again in my work, so I might as well get on and and I like that aspect too. But it's. I could easily remove that, that's not permanent obviously, but I like that. Yeah, what that does in triangulating and, and creating quadrants around the face and how it's making you focus in on the eyes and um, I could probably go in with a bit more highlight I think. pleased with that I could fiddle all day with it but I think essentially apart from I'm gonna so what I like about old pastels they don't dry so you can go back in and do stuff like that and remove bits that you don't like <laughs> um I'm quite I'm quite pleased with how that's come out I really like what's going on with the colours in that I could play all day it's always the way with my paintings 
I tend to use the proviso of if I've got an idea to go on to the next image, which I have for that one, it's probably served its purpose. So I'll leave that one as is. Now I'm going to scrape off this uh, other one and see what I can do with that. But you're probably asking, what are you doing with the actual gel plate, Josh? That's a good question. That bit is always a lot more hit and miss than uh, this bit's more like, I don't know, more like painting. And the, uh, the bit with the actual gel plate print Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I probably need to get a bit more practice in with my arm, with, with the gel plate in order to uh, maximally uh, sort of extract what's going on within the, the, the process. And that, that sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier about um, Realising I've been using way too much paint on on the plate, way too much. And so being quite frugal about it, definitely. Um, but it just gives you more subtlety in the colour that you can layer up. I've never used oil pastel with any colour before on acrylic. If I have. It wasn't like this. Okay. Right. I think that needs a bit of continuity around it, personally. Strong colour, isn't it? Such a faint one. Bit of a skin condition to this one. <laughs> I quite like that though. Passable. I prefer the other image, but you're always going to pick favourites, I suppose. I mean, the beauty with it is that you can just go straight over there, because I'm working in oil pastel, to some extent. 
I can uh, I can just block print it again, do like a stamp print over the top of it and almost reset. But you do, I'll show you in a minute what tends to happen with that though. Because uh, this is, yeah, I mean it's something that I've been using in a much larger project. Um, that's better. That's what it needed. much better. That's what it needed. Put it up. Not so sure about that. <clears throat> Again, I could, yeah, I could fiddle with them for a long time. It's a good, actually, I'm not so, that just needs, I'm quite happy with the portrait on that. What I'm less happy with is the exterior. The square on that isn't working so well on it. But that's, I mean, on my daily with that. Just don't want to use up all my white oil pastel, but it's to just... So there you go. Not done that. Close on that. There we go. Yeah, I thought it was okay on the face. It was just the, uh, yeah, the exterior lines on it. But there we go. So there's those two. Um, I don't know how many of you are watching at the moment. Nine of you. Okay, right, let me check the comments a minute. That's about an hour in. I'm just debating with myself what I do with these. That's a really interesting one. Mm. Oh, past all over the place. Um, what I'm thinking is, is I will do a print off the, the larger plate, the whatever it was, inches by the, the rectangular one that I used to establish. Those I'm going to call, we'll come back to them later, and uh, I'll try to correct them as much as you can your own work. So what I'm going to do is take a risk with this one <sighs> don't know what color to go for that one <sighs> it's a tough one to call this is I don't want to use green because it will make the yellow go green. Oh, I've got a problem with that. You can't control green as a colour. It's a nightmare. I 
think that's dark enough. I need to use that, but it's quite close. But I don't want it to be too. I mean, I'm even tempted to go in with Payne's grey on that, just because I think there's enough structure there to get away with it. Stuff it. I'm gonna go with orange. <laughs> So, what I'm thinking of doing is I'll print this one, dry it out, and then I'll print that smaller one, if it works out quite nicely, over the top of this one and just see what a combination, it'd be a good way of rounding it off kind of thing. But we'll see, I don't know what, remember what I said at the beginning that this plate has got a lot of, not a lot, but a, a reasonable amount of blue residual die to it so I have to bear that in mind when I'm linking up. And I'm not keen on this uh what do my what do you call it in America? Deli paper. I hear a lot of discussions and see a lot of talk about daily paper on uh, on the groups. Uh, the gel point group that I'm in. I'm not even sure what that is. To be honest with you. I think it's the sort of stuff that you get, I don't know, from a delicatessen when you buy what cooked meats. Okay. Ooh, that was risky. That was really risky. Okay, it might work. I'm going to thrash that onto a bit of paper now. Right, so we'll go for as quick a print on that as possible. Still work. There we go. It might work better. Let's have a look at that. Right, I am going to use. There wasn't a lot of paint, so hopefully I can leave that for a couple of minutes while I sort this one out. I've got to do a bit of drying off as it is anyway, so... I've learned to become very proficient with a hair dryer recently. <laughs> right, block your ears. Killed a lot of it, but it cleaned my plate. <laughs> right, okay, it might make this work all the better. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see what we can do now. This could get interesting. Right, something I could. Now, if I'd have given this a little forethought. This is where I crick myself. What I could have done is had or printed it onto this with the line drawing underneath. 
this is where the light box comes in handy so then what I could do is while that's drying or once it's dry switch the light box on beam the image through from the other side or beneath the paint of the line drawing and go round that I mean there's nothing to stop me doing that on the light box really I'm not going to do that now because it would be a lot of jiggery pokery and yeah I'm surprised as many of you have stayed as long as you have but and thank you very much for doing that but I don't want to extend any more time to it but another thing that I could do is have the residual image of this line drawing and then use the once that's dried use oil pastel or the um, the watercolour crayons or the wax crayons and re-establish that portrait within that print and then use what I would because I could I could then print on off of that and create another residual print but what it would mean is is that I could print when I go in and print over the top of that with that I could then scrape through and obviously you're guessing where I'm going that you can reveal the hidden details underneath you can just keep it's like mirror printing this is like you, you've seen what I can well I mean anyone can do this it's just a matter of like settling for what your constituent line drawing is underneath and then what have I got I've generated out of one one line drawing here what five or six four or five six different prints and you can just keep going as long as you've got two two gel plates I'm still trying to remind myself each time I get carried away when I use the gel plates but I want to do some gel plate printing into gel plate printing just to see what happens because for me that's what a gel plate print is it is a it's just made the the press portable whereas I like you, know, you haven't got it you could use it for etching I've used it with lino you can use it for color graph you can use it uh, this resi uh, resist technique is not a million miles away from um, uh, I forget what it is now um, I can't remember what it is now we do it onto the stone yeah another printing technique but it, basically it's yeah it's it's made it's made the 3d print it's made the printing press 3d you can wrap it round things it doesn't have to be flat right anyway should have done that still could do but just so I can wrap things up and show you um, a combination of the two images I'm just going to do this quickly again this is a binder layer so I'm going to put and it's going to be up against its uh, complementary colour so it needs a bit of um, oomph should we say otherwise it will all just turn into a messy useless nonsense <laughs> so yeah Let's see what it does. okay Ooh, that's gonna be really interesting I'm gonna lose a lot of that but never mind this technique for um, larger pieces so you can just go and if I mean if you've been looking I don't know actually you won't have seen this this is an exclusive for you let's get that out of the way so right now this is at the um, the early stages where all that is on that at the moment is wax crayons and um, yeah and I, you can see 
this is the framing thing that I like to play these contradictory colours against each other and hopefully it will create enough tension within what's going on in the colour field to create tension within the compositional field. Um, this is part of a much much bigger project but it's I just wanted to sing the praises of the gel plate once again because it's it's instead of some of the images that I've been working from for this which is going to be a compound of 25 different uh, paintings of the same portrait from 25 different angles and up until now they've been taking uh, some of them have taken two and a half months because they're quite detailed um, this has taken about three days <laughs> so it's really sped the process up for me and that's why I got a gel plate was to was to do things like that it took me a while to figure out how to register the plate and I don't know how I know that Jelly are now making a, like a set square that you can use as a register but I just used my law uh, and just because obviously the plates never stay the same size which is why I got a big gel plate which is what that is and then I just put a mylar frame that I know is exactly square and then I know where the register is each time that I do the gel plate right last bit of noise <laughs> Okay, that did not go, that's still wet. I should have left that a little while. It'll actually come out. I can see that's gonna, let's see what happens when I dry it up a bit. Oh, it's quite dark, isn't it, that one? <laughs> much detail you're getting on that and as I said I, I that was not properly got rushed out bit apologies about that so there you go right so that is a combination what that I'm absolutely inclined now to um I will trace out the line drawing onto the back of that one so it corresponds with where uh, the face falls on on the page and I'm going to rework that because I think it's got potential and yeah that's obviously a combination of I don't know conflating these three images and the colors that, that work on them I hope I've given you some ideas um if you want more <laughs> who doesn't um I'll be, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this every Sunday now at 7 o'clock my time. So obviously I'm guessing that people are different parts of the world here. But I'll be here from 7. I usually don't make my mind up about what I'm going to be doing until about Tuesday, Wednesday that week. But I will post on, the, on my Facebook page. I'm going to do it from Facebook at the moment, but it's still experimental. I might switch to doing it on YouTube. I'm the same on YouTube as I am on Facebook, it's Josh Bow Artwork. Artwork is one one word. Bow is like Bowie except without the I. Okay, right, yeah, I mean it, it and yeah, I should probably say, put a bit of a, a promotion in at the end. These are all for sale. Um if you want to drop me a line, hopefully I've not I've been, you know, reasonably approachable in watching these videos. <laughs> You'll get that I yeah, you can you can always negotiate with me. And uh yeah, if you're interested, drop us a line. Uh, if not, 
I want to see you here next week anyway. I want to do something else. I'm thinking of doing something like this. Bear with us a moment. <coughs> so yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to work it out, but there you go. Numerous versions. But thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next Sunday at 7. Cheers. Bye.